Hello, my name is Jonathan K.O. I got another church lingo. Boing, boing, bo, 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 boing. That was some new. All right, now check this out, y'all. <coughs> judge not that you don't be judged. Judge not. You know, let's go to uh, Matthew 7, 1 through 5. Hey, Brother Jonathan, you know, stop judging us, man. Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? You're not God. Who do you think you are? Only God can judge me. Only God can judge me. Only God. Remember that song from Tupac? Only God can judge me. Well, I want to share something with you. That's not true. God isn't the only one who will judge. Um, will also judge. Yeah. Let me give you another scripture. Uh, I'm Googling it right now, y'all. Scripture coming to my mind. Hold on for a quick minute. Okay, that is in... Okay. Got it. Got it. More ammunition for the mission. Sorry, y'all. I know I'm kind of like... Stuff just comes to my mind as I'm on here. But anyway, <coughs> so Matthew 7, 1, 5. Judge not that you be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye, and look, a plank is in your own eye. Hypocrite. First remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Bam. There it is. There it is, y'all. There it is. <coughs> so the whole point is this is that um Jesus isn't saying don't judge don't judge anybody no that's not scripture because if that is scripture then the apostles who rode with Jesus are in big trouble for coming against what Jesus said okay alright now Let's break down what Jesus means. He's saying, do not be strict towards others' sin and lax towards your own sin. You understand? He's saying that in this passage where he says, judge not that you be not judged, for what, what judgment you judge, you will be judged, and with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. He's saying, you're guilty of the same sins. You understand? And you're judging them for the same sins that you're presently guilty of. That's what you call hypocritical judgment. Okay? Now that's what that's talking about. Okay? So you're committing adultery and I'm coming on you hard and I'm committing adultery as well. You understand? And it seems crazy, but hey, that's what he's talking about. I mean, people out here doing it. Okay, now he's also saying... Um, well, you've got people who they're committing lesser sins. That's that speck, okay? And you're judging him with a plank in your eye. That's that weight of your sin, you understand? The weight of your sin is the plank. Because people try to act like there's no weight of your sins. And I'll do a, a, um, a church lingo on that for you as well. But um, people act like, you know, there's weight of your sins and there's not sins then there's all sins are the same that's what they're doing okay well there are weightier sins than others okay um somebody who rapes little girls and shoots them in the head after they do that they are not going to get the same time as somebody who stole a box of staples from staples or from you know um kinkos okay 
they're not going to do the same time in prison. Well, as it is on earth, as it is in heaven, as it is in heaven, as it is in earth, it's just got to, it's got to mirror, okay, the judgment of God is going to mirror what's going on, so that's not how it works, you know what I'm saying? One person steals a car, another person, you know, shoots old ladies with, with, with shotguns, and he's a serial killer, and he only shoots old ladies, old, you know, um, ladies, that's it, that's all he does, okay, so, weigh the odds, weigh it out, okay, somebody's going to die, somebody's going to get their possessions stolen, no, no, okay, so that's not how it works, okay, so, <coughs> we need to get clear understanding what Jesus is saying, he's saying that there's way to your sin, you're judging this person of matters that are not even as big as the matters that you have, okay? You have weightier sinful matters to deal with, and you're focused on their sins, and you're trying to rebuke them for their sins, and you got sins that are weightier than theirs, okay? And he's not saying also afterwards, um, after you take that plank out of your eye, he's not saying shut up. Now he's saying now go back and help your brother, okay? Now go back and help your brother. Go back and help your brother get that little speck out of his eye. That little speck of, you know, um, I don't know, those little white lies, he says. You know, if you say, uh, you know, stuff like, uh, hey, man, did you, did you, uh, what did you do last night? Oh, uh, you know, I went to a restaurant and, you know, and, and me and my wife, we went to a restaurant you know, and we and we ate very good. It was very um great food, and you know um we spent a lot of money on it, and you know um I treated her to this very expensive restaurant. No, you didn't. You took it to the carryout. You took it to the Chinese carryout takeout. Okay, that's your sin. You're guilty of always talking about you know little stuff that you do that you don't do, like you know. You took your wife to the takeout and you exaggerated and lied and told your, your buddy that you took her to some fancy Italian restaurant. No, it wasn't Italian. It was, it was Vietnamese. Okay? And, and, and it wasn't a restaurant. It was a takeout spot. Stop playing. <laughs> now help your brother. <laughs> help your brother. Now, you, now that you've got that adultery and that, and that homosexuality out of your life, you know that that you were you were you were in a home you were a homosexual adulterer, okay? And you're a pastor, you're a homosexual adulterer, and you're and you're preaching about and you're coming against him because he didn't pay his um his offering. You know what I mean? Okay, no, all right. We're not going to do that. You homosexual adulterer, pastor, okay? All right. So that's what Jesus is saying, and we got, we have good references. I'm going to go straight to Galatians six, <coughs> seven through eight. So Galatians six, if you don't mind turning with me, Galatians six, seven through eight. Okay, it reads here. It says, um, "Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap." For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. So, you know, you're walking around reaping the same judgments that will be judged unto you because you're not walking in the Spirit. You're not walking in the Spirit when you act this way, okay? Also, um, because you know you're guilty of these same these same accusations or or worse accusations okay now um let's go to uh Romans chapter 2 this is a great reference okay as well this is a great reference as well Romans 2 1 Okay, Romans 2, 1 through 10. 
And it says here, therefore you are inexcusable, O man. <laughs> Whoever you are who judge, for in whatever you judge, another you condemn yourself. Meaning, while you're judging him, you're condemning yourself based upon your judgments because of your guilt, your own guilt for your own wrongs that you're spewing on others. He says, for you who judge practice the same things. He says, but we know that the judgment of God is according to truth against those who practice such things and do you think this O oh man you who judge those practicing such things and doing the same that you will escape the judgment of God okay so he's saying you're not gonna escape God's judgment it's just like you can you need to check out my um my brother uh my brother Saint Jones he's got a video called Mr. False Prophet and that's spelled like with a prophet F I T, okay, um, making money type profit. You know, and um, and you know, you think you're gonna. Well, Paul is saying that you think you're gonna escape judgment, okay? That's a rap song that my brother made, my brother Saint Jones. He's talking about the, the real false prophet, and, the, and you think you're gonna escape judgment? <coughs> he says you're doing the same. You you're guilty of the same. You know, you, you think you'll escape the judgment of God? Nah. Okay, let's go to verse, um, let's go to verse, uh, I'm going to keep going. It says, or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? Okay, because God is a good God. And he's like, you know, show some mercy with these people because they can repent, you know. And you're coming on them with, 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 with this harshness. As if you're not guilty for the same things. You understand? You're guilty for what they're very well guilty of. And you're coming off as if they're not. As if God can't be good and kind to them and merciful and long-suffering. You know what I mean? And you're coming at them like, 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 you know, he's basically telling them like, hey, you wrong, your daggone self. Okay? It says, but in accordance with your hardness and your impotent heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God who will render to each one according to his deeds. Look at your works. What are your deeds? Okay, You're already evil. He's telling you that you're evil yourself and you're preaching as if you're not evil. Okay, Eternal life to those who be patient, continuance in doing good seek for glory, honor, and immortality. So he's saying these are the people who will be judged for this. You'll be they'll 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 be judged for these deeds. E eternal life, eternal life to those who be patient, continuance in doing good, seek for glory, honor, and immortality. It says, but to those who are self seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath. He's saying, okay, for those who do not obey the truth, and they're all focused on self-seeking, they're, fo they're so focused on their self, they're not, they don't care about others. You understand? They don't have a ministry of an open heart for others. They're not out here with the homeless. They're not preaching to the lost. They're not preaching to the sick and, the, and, and, and praying with people and, 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 and laboring. No, they're just focused on self-seeking, making themselves look better than you. You know what I'm saying? And um, he's saying that they're also not, they do not obey the truth but they obey unrighteousness. Well, he's saying for them, indignation and wrath. Now, verse 9 says, tribulation and anguish on every soul of man who does evil, of the Jew first and, of, and also of the Greek. We'll give you an example. Um, there was a person on Facebook that, uh, that, 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 that goes pretty hard. And I was like, wow, they kind of sound like me. You know what I'm saying? And I liked her because she went hard and I go hard. But at the same time, in my going hard, I got to watch myself. Okay, I gotta check myself. I, you gotta best believe I gotta check myself. Now I'm not here to confess all my sins to y'all. I don't even know y'all, but I, I, people in my circle, yeah, I confess sins to them. They know about me. People who are in my circle, especially people who are out here in the ministry with me on the streets, moving my brother Roy. Okay, um, I, I confess my sins to my own little boy, my own son. You know what I'm saying? Um, people who are with me, I'm not telling them to, to people who want to just gossip and slander. You don't. I don't have to. I don't. Have, I don't owe you anything. I preach to you. I give you the good news. 
Okay. Now, if I'm guilty of anything, which I need to not be, but you know what I'm saying, if I am wrong for anything, that doesn't mean that I have to go publicly announce that on YouTube to everybody. I announce that to people. Now, I can and I have. Don't get me wrong. But what I'm saying is that I'm not obligated to doing that to all you all. Okay. God is not calling us to just tell everybody your sins. You know what I'm saying? No. Nah. Tell someone your sins who you know, like a like-minded Christian, not like-minded Christian if you're carnal, but I mean a Christian who you know will pray for you, you know what I'm saying, someone who will help you and pray for you. So, you know what I'm saying? And so, um, and I've been seeing Christians on here exposing their sins, and it's cool. Do what you do. I've done it. I've already done it before. I've done it. You can look at all these old videos. And I'd be like, man, y'all pray for me, man. I'm struggling with lust. I'm struggling with, you know what I'm saying? I, I done did it. Okay, so it's, it's not nothing new. <clears throat> but nonetheless... Um, this person, man, they, they were actually a Hebrew Israelite, man. And I was like, wow, I was shocked. Because she sounds so on fire for God. She, she, she just went so hard. She preached that good news. And she said some key points all the time. Come to find out, she's a Hebrew Israelite. Now, I'm like, whoa, I had to unsubscribe from her. Because, you know, certain people you just can't rebuke. They just can't receive it. They just, they can rebuke you, but they can't get rebuked. You know what I'm saying? And, um... It is what it is. Uh, I take rebukes if they're actually true and they, if they're actually something that I need to rebuke, uh, ask for God for forgiveness for and things like that, you know. Um, I've had people on here try to rebuke me about, like, you shouldn't have said that or you shouldn't have said this. And I'm like, that stuff is in the Bible. What are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I, I ain't tripping off all that stuff. But um, but if you're wrong because of your sins, you know what I'm saying, you need to, you need to repent, man. You need to repent, okay? And uh, this person, they're wrong because, okay, black Hebrew Israelites, they preach racism towards white people. White people are our brothers in Christ, if they're in Christ. If they're, I mean, every race, if they're in Christ, they're our brothers in Christ. I don't care if they're Cambodian, Middle Eastern, uh, Yugoslavian, you know what I'm saying, Bosnia. I don't care where they're from. South Africa, North Eskimo. America, I don't care, man. If they live for Jesus, man, they are your siblings, okay, spiritually. And that's what it is. But black Hebrew Israelites, they're so arrogant and mean and cruel, they preach hate throughout all these uh, very popular, you know, big cities. They preach hate. They preach hate against white people. They don't believe that um, <clears throat> white people can receive salvation. They're the devil, man. They're being used by Satan, man. And every real Christian knows that, whether you're a black Christian, white Christian, whatever. Like, and I've seen, you know, man, I've seen so many, it's just sad, man. I mean, it, it kind of reminds me of the 5% nation. They preach that the white man is the devil, you know what I'm saying? And um, it's just whack, man. But um, I just want y'all to know that, listen, man, you know, this person is somebody who will be under that type of, of this type of judgment. Okay? They could be probably rebuking people on Facebook all day long, but you're a black Hebrew Israelite. They don't, and, 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 and I was looking and I was like, wow, this girl's a black Hebrew Israelite. And she's like, no, I'm not, I'm not. Yeah. But, but you are. You don't have to say you are to be that. I don't care if you don't want to call yourself a Catholic. If you pray to Mary, you're a Catholic. You're in that Catholic. You have those Catholic demons. If you bow down to, 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 to idols and all that stuff, you have a, a demon of Catholicism will say, okay, that's enough. That's, that's, that's enough for me. I'll go on them. You know what I'm saying? That's all they need. So if you're out here preaching that salvation is only for the Jews, and you're preaching that black people are the Jews, that demon that's tied to, and they, because they, they preach that black people are the Jews, they preach that black people are the Israelites, and so that demon that's tied to that, because this this demon's tied to every sin, and so that demon tied to those sins of religion that they're practicing, those false religious spirits, they will say, okay, that that registers as the Hebrew Israelite, black Hebrew Israelite religion, I'm going in. <laughs> so that person, whether or not they want to believe that they have, you know, uh, whether or not they want to believe that they're part of the um, black Hebrew Israelites, they are. And they have their same demons. That's why she's self-righteous. And, and I didn't know that she was self-righteous. I thought that she was just righteous. But when I seen the sin that she's stuck in and doesn't even appear to realize it. She doesn't believe that salvation is for white people. And I'm like, wow, how to get rid of that girl, man? And she's like, I'm not that girl. I got a name. And I'm like, because I said, wow, this girl, because I commented, because we were debating on there, and I was like, this girl's a Hebrew Israelite. 
She's like, my name ain't this girl. So, hey, it is what it is. I ain't here to argue with you. Peace. You know what I'm saying? Now, let me give you this. I'm going to give you 21 through 24. <coughs> 21 through 24 says, You therefore who teach an another, do you not teach yourself? You who preach that a man should not steal, do you steal? You who say, do not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? You who abhor arbors, do you rob temples? He says, you who make your boast in the law, do you dishonor God through breaking the law? For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. And I'm going to have to make a video about that too, man. That's why you can't be out here claiming that you're a Christian or carnal. Because that's the reason why the name of God is blasphemed. Okay, um, but anyway, uh, let's go to, and people are already looking for a reason to come against God, and you just give them an advantage whenever you con them. So it says, um, did the disciples and apostles judge? Yeah, they did, okay? Yes, but it was not a hypocritical judgment. We are to judge. So let's go to 1 Corinthians 5, 12 through, um, <coughs> 12 through 13, all right? Let's see. It says, For what have I to do with judging those also who are outside? Do you not judge, judge those who are inside? He's saying, Are we not to judge those who are inside? Of course we are. He says, But those who are outside, God judges. Therefore, meaning, those who are in the world, God judges them. We don't judge them in the world. We tell them, Hey, listen, we, 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 we accuse them of their guilt. We, we say, Listen, you know, but we don't, we don't make decisions for them and, 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 and rightfully okay we, we're not part of them you understand when I was in prison um, and I know you probably be like man you got you always talk about these prison. but I, it was a lot of things that I learned and so I saw the blood gang this, you know Crips and Bloods I saw the blood gang members and they chastised one of the blood gang members okay and, and, and you know as it is on heaven as it is on earth as it is in hell as it is on this earth some things are very I remember a man he said he went to hell he said it was like the club scene I, you guys probably seen that video he said, it's like the club in hell. It looks like the club. You know what I'm saying? It looks just like the club. It's crowded, packed, jam-packed. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, I saw these blood gang members, man. They they um, they um started beating up one of the blood gang members. And not to jump him in, but to chastise him because of something that he did. They were like, okay, you, you did this. Because they're very organized. This is an organized crime. And they're like, you know, they're like the mafia. You know what I'm saying? They're like, okay, you're wrong for this. We have to chastise you. Well, it's the same way. In the body of Christ, you know what I'm saying? Um, this is how it works, you know what I'm saying? In the body of Christ. We we also judge, okay? We judge. Um, <coughs> that's why you saw Jesus coming there, whipping them. And that's why you would hear the Apostle Paul tell them that, don't make me come with a rod. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that he was going to whip them. But he's like, you know, I don't want to come hard on y'all. Because, you know what I'm saying? Because I am given the dispensational um, authority to 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 minister judgment on you all okay it also said that we'll judge the angels let me keep going it says uh dare any of you having a matter against another go to law before the unrighteous and not before the saints he's like man y'all going to the law y'all going to the police and you can't even he says do you not know that the saints will be will judge the world now we're going to judge the world <coughs> and it says and if the world will be judged by you, he said, will judge the world. He ain't saying now. God now judges the world. Okay? And this is, and if the world will be judged by you, are you unworthy? <coughs> Excuse me. Are you unworthy to judge the small matters? He said, can't you? Don't you know that if we're going to judge the world, and these are going to be big matters, don't you know that you can judge small matters within among the brethren? He say, do you not know? That we shall judge angels? Man, we're going to be judging angels, man. Come on, man. Disobedient angels, man. We're going to be judging them. You feel me? So how are we going to be doing all that? And we can't even tell the brother, hey, brother, you're wrong, man. You know what I'm saying? You need to stop doing this. You need to stop doing that. How can we not tell them that? That's not biblical. Even Jesus told me during prayer one day. He said, he said admonish the sinner with agape love. Okay? That agape love, it's not unconditional. He's saying, with the love of, of self-denial, okay? 
and, 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 and it's not the love that y'all want to talk about, talking about like, he uh, uh, ain't talking about that, man. That stuff is garbage, man. Man, an open rebuke is better than love carefully concealed. He's telling me, he told me, man, listen, go to these people, man. Let them know what time it is, man. Let them know, okay? That's love. That's love. And we're going to be doing a uh, church lingo on love as well, okay? So that's love. You understand? Love is correction, okay? That's when you know somebody loves somebody. Um, the Bible talks about how when a parent, when the parents uh, correct, when they don't, uh, when they when they spare the rod, it says that they um that they bring judgment on their children. Man, come on, man, you gotta you gotta spank those kids. It says one who doesn't spank the kids, it says man that they hate them, man. That you you hate your children, bro. So you know that God ain't recognizing that as love, man. Just just because you're soft pitch, okay. All right, and I'm not telling you to yell either, but I'm telling you, like, man, you gotta, you gotta bring correction. You know what I'm saying? Because this thing does need to be done with gentleness, but it doesn't need to be done with this false love, because it's a false love going on out here. You know what I'm saying? By the way, my son just repented, man. My son just repented of of his sins, man. Come on, man. You know what I'm saying? And the devil is a liar, talking about. Got my son mother talking about, you know, if uh, that's why your son don't confess nothing. That's why he don't tell you nothing because you're too strict. The devil's a liar. My son telling me stuff you would never know. You know what I'm saying? You'll never know. And that's why you're mad when he comes over my house because he lives with me as well. Because when he comes over my house, he go back over there, holy, and she hates it because it testifies against her, because it tells on her. You know what I'm saying? He done got rid of all his buddies and everything. Man, I can't be your friend, man. Y'all on y'all way to hell, man. I'm going to heaven. I gotta live for Jesus. And she's like, it don't take for all that. It don't take for all that. Yes, it does. Okay. And we're talking about good judging. Okay, let's go to 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10. It says, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not in in inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Wow. Now, speaking of my son, now he got beat up behind this, um, okay. His 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 mother's mother is a homosexual. His my son's grandmother, not my mother, but my son's grandmother is a homosexual. And um his mother being mad because you know he's talking about being holy now, she says, So what you trying to say? Because see these demons know what time it is. They know who's going to hell. So so they put him to the test. So what you trying to say? Uh, your grandma's gonna go to hell because she's homosexual? He said, yeah. If she don't repent, yeah. <laughs> see? They just want to see, these demons just want to see if you got the guts to say it. That's all. That's why you saw Joe Osteen fall under pressure. Well, I don't know. On Larry King Live. Well, I'm not sure. You know, well, that's not really my place. I'm just here to preach love. I'm just here to preach love. No, you're not doing no service. You're not doing no service, man. You phony, man. My son, 13 years old, okay, and he he dealing with a a mean ghetto mama, and he gonna tell her what it is. Um. Okay, now we're gonna go to uh. Let's see what Peter got to say. Does Peter judge? Let's see that Peter judged. Let's go to Acts five. Let's see if Peter had any judging to speak. Acts five, eleven through twenty, eleven through sixteen. He says, so great, it says, so great fear came upon all the church and upon all who heard these things. And through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people. And they were all, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. Yet none of the, none of the rest dared join them, but the people esteemed them highly. And believers were increasingly added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women. So that they brought the sick out into the streets and laid them on beds and couches. And at least the shadow of Peter passing by might fall on them. Also a multitude gathered the surrounding cities to Jerusalem, bringing sick people and those who were tormented by unclean spirits. And they were all healed. <coughs> okay. Now this is all because of... Ananias and Sapphira. So judgment, when you bring judgment, you can help people. 
Okay, these people came to Christ and, and great big signs and wonders followed because Peter was in the will of God. Okay, he wasn't scared. He was heavenly minded. He said what God said. He said, look, the feet of those who, who, who uh, buried your husband, they're at the door. Okay, they're here. Okay, so they, they buried the Ananias and Sapphira because they lied to the Holy Spirit. Okay, and he judged them. He brought judgment upon them from the Holy Spirit. Okay, from the knowing, the knowledge of God. Okay. And that benefited the rest of the church. The rest of the church saw mighty signs and wonders. People got born again. People saw signs and wonders. Okay, all because of that example. Okay, um, they saw, they rejoiced in Christ. Okay, let's see John. Let's see his judgments. The Apostle John. These are people who hung around Jesus. Okay. Let's see, the, let's see what they got to say. Okay, so John. 1 John 3 verses 8 and 10. It says right here, this is verse 8 and 10. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. Okay, let's see what 10 has to say. That's a judgment. He says, so if, you're, if you sin, you're of the devil. Even if you're born again, you're of the devil, because the devil has been sinning since the beginning. It says right here, in this the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. Okay? So he's saying you're not of God if you practice unrighteousness. You're not of God if you don't love your brother. Okay? You're not of God. That's a judgment. You understand? Know he's telling you, listen, this is a judgment upon you. If you don't do this, you're not of God. If you do this, you're of Satan. If you don't do this, you're you're you if you don't if you do this, you know what I'm saying? He's putting it down. He's laying the law down. Okay. Now let's go to <coughs> um twenty two. Okay, so 1 John 2, 22 uh, through 23. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. You got people who say, well, you know, I even heard T.D. Jakes try to act like, you know, when, when, when um, there's others, when Jesus said there's others in um I have other sheep not of this fold. He thinks that those are Muslims. He was talk Jesus was talking about the um the Gentiles, man. You understand? But T D Jakes flipped it and act like he was talking about Muslims. He's not talking about Muslims. Jesus was talking about non Israelites. That's all he was talking about, okay? That's all he was talking about. And so now you got this great figure like T D Jakes. Now when people hear that, they're gonna think, Oh wow, you know what I'm saying? Well maybe these people can go to heaven. Because they're, they're, those are sheep not of this fold, man. Nah, and it's been these these big big time passes. They get put in positions in front of people like Oprah, in front of people like you know what I'm saying, um, Larry King. You know what I'm saying? They get the microphone shoved in their face, and these people want to hear answers because these demons in these people like Larry King or Oprah and these demons in everybody, they want to hear the truth, and they know that the the people know the truth. Excuse me. Excuse me, the, the demons know the truth, but the demons operating the people are manipulating and they want to see what you got to say. Because, see, the demons know. Okay, the demons already know. Even the word demon, the word da, in the word demon, in the, in the Greek word for demon, it means knowing ones. Okay, so they're knowing. They're not all knowing, but they know. You understand? <coughs> Alright, so these demons know what they're doing, man. You know what I'm saying? So you got to stand strong against these demons. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Okay. Let me see what it, what it says here in um, Matthew 12:42. Let me see what Matthew 12:42 has to say. It says right here, the queen of the south will rise up in the judgment with this generation and condemn it, for she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and indeed a greater than Solomon is here. Well, it already said in in 1 Corinthians um Five, what does it say? First Corinthians five that will judge the world. Okay, so when people say, "Well, only God can judge me," the devil is a liar. The Bible says otherwise. It doesn't say only God. It says we'll judge the world. Read, read, read. Um, First Corinthians six two. It says, "Do you not know that the saints will judge the world?" Okay, <coughs> we're, ju we're gonna judge the world, and it says. It says the, the queen of the south, that's Queen Sheba, it says, will rise up in the judgment with this generation, that's us, and condemn it. 
For she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And indeed, a greater than Solomon is here. <laughs> That's Yeshua. All right, I love his name. You know, don't you love his name? Well, let's keep on going, y'all. Let's keep on going. This is a little long one. I could stop it, but I got a lot of scriptures. I don't want to give y'all, because I don't want y'all thinking that you can't judge. You got to judge righteous judgments. If you're wrong for something, get that plank out of your eye and get rid of it and go back and help that brother. If you got a speck in your eye, get rid of the speck and help your brother, okay? Just get rid of plex, planks and specks. We don't want planks and specks. We focus on just righteousness. And, we, and if we got it, we need to get rid of it. We need to recognize that we got it, humble ourselves, recognize we're wrong. Okay, I apologize. Boom. Me and my brother Roy, my brother who we preach with, and we always like, okay, brother, you know what? You're right. Okay, I apologize. Okay, he like, okay, you're right. I apologize. Okay. You know what I'm saying? We, we, we focus, man. We got to focus. You know what I'm saying? If I'm ever wrong about something, okay, brother, you know what? You got a point there. Okay, I apologize. Boom. That's how it's supposed to be done. You move on because that stuff could hold you back. It's going to hold your ministry back. It's going to hold your service to God back. And your prayer life is going to be out of whack. And I'm going to give you guys more stuff about how God doesn't answer prayers and stuff. So I want you to know that, okay? I want you guys to be encouraged by this. Because Satan hates all this information I got to share with y'all. Um, this is right here. Um, 1 Timothy 5, 19 through 20. Do not receive an accusation against an elder except from two or three witnesses. Those who are sinning rebuke in the presence of all, that the rest also may fear. Man, did you, did you read that? Did you hear that? Verse 20 says, those who are sinning rebuke in the presence of all, that the rest also may fear. This is the same thing with Ananias and Sapphira. This is in Ephesians 5, 13 through 14. Okay? Excuse me. Um, 1 Timothy 5, 19 through 20, I meant to say. Okay? So this is the same thing that's going on. Okay? Rebuking the presence of all. Okay? So that, that, that the rest also may fear. You understand? It's not about your emotions. That's what you think. You think this is about this love. Yeah, it's about love, but it's not about your type of love. There's another type of love out here that's going on and it ain't biblical, y'all. It's false, man. It don't come from God, man. You know what I'm saying? He said rebuking the presence of all, man. You understand? That they may bring fear upon the congregation. All right? Because God is looking at the bigger fear, the big, the bigger issue here. Now let's go to 1 Corinthians 5, uh, 9 through 10. Uh, 9 through 13. It says... I write to you in my epistle not to keep company with sexually immoral people. Yet, I certainly did not mean with the sexually immoral people of this world, or with the covetous or extortioners or idolaters, since then you would not need to go out of the world. He's saying, you know, I'm not telling all the people at your job. Talk to them. I'm not telling you that you can't associate with people at your job. That's not what I'm saying, the Lord. He's saying, listen. I'm talking about people in the fold, people in the body of Christ. If they're a fake Christian, stop associating with them. If they're, if they're, when I say a fake Christian, let me let me say it better like this: If they're a disobedient Christian, committing sexual immorality, covetousness, idolatry, all these wicked things, okay, extortioning, okay, he's saying don't fellowship with them, okay, because that's corrupt. That's that corrupt company, which destroys good matters, okay. <laughs> and so, and, 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 and yeah, we can't escape the world, okay? You're going you're gonna to see people who are sinners, okay? He's not telling you, oh my God, oh, 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 no, no, be around sinners. Go ahead. If you're at your workplace, if you're at your job, be around them. You got to. You can't run from them. Now, now, don't go out of your way and try to be down. You know what I'm saying? Don't go out of your way to try to be one with them. But I mean, come on, man. If you're eating lunch right here, you know what I'm saying? And you're eating lunch. And then a sinner sits to you. It's not like you got to get up and move. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that you're wrong if you do. But come on, man. God got to use you. He, he, you got to plant seeds. How you going to plant seeds if you're ducking all these sinners? No, nah, that's not what he's saying, man. You know what I'm saying? And, and, uh, and he's also not saying go be a part of them and join them. He's not saying that. He's not telling you be one with them. No. Un you know, you'll be unequally yoked. He's telling you how can you go out in the world? How can you even be used? go out in the world if you're not you know among sinners that's not the case okay so it also says here um and if anyone does not obey this is uh second thessalonians 3 14 through 15 and if anyone does not obey our word in this epistle note that person and do not keep company with him that he may be ashamed okay verse 15 
yet do not count him as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. Okay, so don't treat him like an enemy. Admonish him as a brother, but don't keep company with him. Okay? Because God wants you to bring shame on people. God wants you to bring guilt on people. You know what I'm saying? I had to bring judgments on a brother. I, I don't associate with him. It was another brother I used to preach with. Um, me and my brother Roy, we preached with him before. You know what I'm saying? But I preached with him more than one time. <clears throat> and, um, I mean, him and his him and his buddy, and they was talking about faggots in the bullhorn. You faggots! There's faggots! You guys are faggots! Like, and he's like, man, go preach to him. Go preach. Like, don't, don't. ease up, man. You know what I'm saying? We, I, I went inside of the restroom. I went inside of some uh, restaurant to use the restroom. And he's like, hey, man, did you preach to them? And he's all pointing in their face. Like, did you preach to them? Come on, man. Get up out of my face, man. You tripping, man. I'm saying, you want some militant gospel. You want some, you know, no limit soldier gospel. I ain't with you, man. You know what I'm saying? You preaching faggot, man. That stuff is, you can't say that stuff, man. God ain't calling us to be talking like that, man. You tripping. You done bumped your head. <laughs> you got to be telling people, like, hey, listen, God does not. Uh, call people to be homosexuals. Yes, being a homosexual is out of the will of God. Talk like that. Don't be telling people they're faggots, man. That stuff is outright um, um, uh, derogatory, okay? And, and you don't want to bring um, reproach on the gospel. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to bring blame on the gospel. You know what I'm saying? You're carrying the name of Jesus here, man. You got to be mature with this thing. If you ain't mature, man, you got to skedaddle, man. Kick rocks. I can't be around you, man. I don't call people faggots. You say, I don't call homosexuals faggots. I call them homosexuals. I don't even call them lesbians and gays. I call them homosexuals. I let them know that you're a homosexual. Okay? I'm not trying to make it nice and make it sound like this new thing. Like, oh, gay. Oh, no, no. Gay means happy. You guys switch that up. Just like y'all try to change. When I say you, I mean the homosexual community. Just like the world and the world who's ever the viewers. Not these Christians who's listening because I know y'all hold it. But whoever's, I don't know who's looking at these videos. But whoever, like... Want to just randomly say, you know, uh, religion and then they come against it? Nah, y'all trying to change words, man. The Antichrist is already, like I said, he's already trying to change laws and the times. We ain't changing these words. Nah. Nah. <laughs> we ain't doing that, man. No, gay means this. Lesbian means you're from Lesbos. That's an island near near um, Greece. We're not doing that, man. You're homosexual. <coughs> you're female homosexual. Okay. All right. Okay, so... um. Let's go to, uh, and yeah, so cease association. One of the other guys, he was, he was on the bullhorn preaching with us, you know what I'm saying? Next thing you know, he, he started talking about how, uh, he don't even believe in God no more. You know what I'm saying? So like, ah, I can't associate with you. All because God didn't answer some little prayer that he wanted. You know what I'm saying? You know, you ain't had no connection with God all the while. You just wanted to preach. See, that's that, that's that thing in your eye. You feel me? That's that thing in your eye. You don't really got no connection with God. You just get the kick out of being loud and thinking you're effective on a bullhorn, man. You'd be surprised, y'all. You'd be surprised, man. I'm trying to tell you. <clears throat> okay, let's go to 2 Timothy, chapter 2. This is 24 through 26. Is that right? Oh, this is 1 Timothy. Excuse me, my bus. All right, boom. 2 Timothy, 20, 2 Timothy 2, 24 through 26. It says here, And the servant of the Lord must not quarrel but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition. <laughs> there you go. You got to do it, man. If God perhaps will grant them repentance. If God perhaps. Because you never know. They might die in their sins. So, you know, pray for mercy. But uh, so that they may know the truth. And that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil. There you go. Having been taken captive by him to do his will. Because some people can just be, you know... um bewitched and they're just gone I had to rebuke a brother the other day you understand just just the other day at the workplace you know what I'm saying and he um he rejected it man he lied he was sexually harassing somebody at the job and now the person is mad at me the the female who confined in me she's mad at me now but I had to bring this judgment to him I had to let him know like listen if you're guilty of these things is being said because at least two people came to me about him okay three you know what I'm saying and so you know <clears throat> But one concerning this sexual harassment. Others came to be about carnality and, and vulgar speech. Okay, now, now, now I had to finally bring it to him. And this person thought, I thought I could confide in you. You want me to get fired? No, 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 no. 
You're not talking about regular sinners. You're talking about my brother here. This is still my Christian brother. I don't care if he's disobedient. I have the blood will be my hand if I sit here and talk about him behind his back with you in safety and and, and and you know on all that. We're safely talking about him behind his back and how he does this and how he does that. And we're talking about it to each other. And it feels great. No, 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 no. I feel guilty if I hear you telling me all this stuff. You didn't told me once, twice, three times, four times. No, no, I'm not going up numbers. I don't want no blood on my hand. Let me go tell this brother. I love him. I love him enough to tell him. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Okay. All right. First Timothy one through twenty. So, excuse, and he, yeah, he's a brother. He didn't receive it. You know what I'm saying? He's a brother, but he didn't receive it. Uh, let me read further. It says twenty four to twenty six. It says, it says they might be snared by the devil. He lied. I know she was right, even though she's in her sins. She's a transgressor. She's supposed to be born again. She's in her sins. She's a transgressor. However, I know she was right. He was doing that. I believe it. I honestly believe it. Because I hear his mouth too. But I don't get... He makes sure that I don't hear all that. You know what I'm saying? He makes sure that I don't hear all that. But anyway, uh, 1 Timothy 1.20. Hallelujah. It says here. It says, uh, okay, now, 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 you trying to act like we can't judge? Well, let me get here. Let's go. We already got Ananias and Sapphira. They got judged. He said, he said, bring fear upon this congregation. Okay? Now, well, let's go here. It says, uh, I'm going to start at 18. 1 Timothy 1.18, it says, This charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage the good warfare, having faith and a good conscience. It's nothing like a good conscience. Okay? Which some have rejected concerning the faith and have suffered shipwreck. Uh, meaning they've su the, they have uh, rejected the truth concerning the, the faith and good conscience. Some have rejected concerning the faith, have suffered shipwreck. Okay, they're crash dummies, y'all, and um, <coughs> that's what we say in D.C. Use a crash dummy. You know what I'm saying? And uh, and he says, of whom are Hermanius and Alexander, whom I delivered to Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. That's why I cut that dude off who was in the bullhorn. Not my brother Roy. Okay, that's my partner in the body of Christ. That's my partner in the gospel. I'm talking about another guy. Okay, um, a while back when we used to preach, um, he he blasphemes the name of God. You know what I'm saying? Because he got angry with God. So you know you're not supposed to be around blasphemers. You know what I'm saying? Don't don't kick it with blasphemers. I bless God. There was a man at my job. You know what I'm saying? People, some people at my job they they honor me as a man of God. And um, well actually everybody does, but. But this is one guy who, 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 he's in his sins, but he gets a lot of prophetic dreams. And, and we talk a lot, you know what I'm saying? He's a sinner. But we, we talk a lot, you know what I'm saying? And I actually like him. I, I love him, actually. You know what I'm saying? And, um, and anyway, um, you know what I'm saying? He listens to a lot of things that I say. And, um, you, know, you know, I mean, I don't know how much the seed is being sown in his heart because he's not obeying. However, he knows the truth. And I scared the living, living daylights out of him. And he always wants godly advice, and he always comes to me. <clears throat> and so anyway, he was talking about how he was listening to this rapper named Rich Homie Kwan. <laughs> the Rich Homie Kwan. And he said, I got more verses than the Bible. Something like that when he was rapping. And he said, oh man, he said he, when he hears these songs where people mention Jesus' name in vain and God's name in vain and godly things in vain, he said he immediately thinks about me. And they gave, I gave God glory for that. And he said he immediately thinks about me because he knows that, you know, he said, man, I can't like that verse because Brother Jonathan probably wouldn't like that. So make sure you continue to be a light in these people's. Okay. <clears throat> Titus. And I don't say that to toot my own horn. I say that as an example for you all to recognize what impact this does. Okay. And stay away from blasphemies because if you come against blasphemy, people also in turn will see that, wow, Jonathan comes against blasphemy or, or such and such subscriber comes against blasphemy. Okay. Wow. That means when I'm listening to Rich Homie Kwan, I can't ent entertain this blasphemy. As a matter of fact, before you know it, next thing you know, they're like, you know what? I can't entertain Rich Homie Kwan. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, you don't know how God might work. You feel me? All right. So Titus three ten through eleven. Okay, Titus three ten through eleven. It says here. It says reject the device of man. This is a heretic. Okay, reject the device of man after the first and second admonition. Knowing that such a person is wrapped in sinning, being self-condemned. So, so he said after the first and after the twice, he said reject them. So he's not saying keep dealing with these people. Okay, this is what he's saying. This is the word of the Lord. Okay, I just read it to you, man. It's up to you. Okay, I just read it to you. It's up to you. He said reject them after the first, second, 
Just leave them alone, man. And it's not talking about people who want to grow. It's some of people who are just they just steadfast in their selfish ways. They're like, nah, I don't want to hear it. I can't receive it. Uh, I ain't trying to hear it. Uh, I don't want to hear it. Like you know what I'm saying? That's how they act. They re they reject rebukes. Leave them alone. It's biblical to leave them alone. If you're not doing it, you're coming against what the Bible says. I want you to know that. Because you're not better than the Bible. You're not better than the Word of God. Okay? Romans 16. Okay? A lot of Christians think that they can do better. You know what I'm saying? If Jesus said, treat them like pagans and tax collectors, then who do you think you are? Okay? Now, and in, in this context, he's talking about those who just, they just don't, they're heretics. They're divisive. Okay? Leave them alone. You know what I'm saying? Alright. Now I urge you, brethren, note those who cause divisions and offense. This is all judgments. These are all dealing with judgments. People say you can't judge. I just want you to know that. Now I urge you, brethren, note those who cause divisions and offenses, contrary to the doctrine which you learned, and avoid them. For those who are such do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by smooth words and flattering speech deceive the hearts of the simple. These people are deceptive. Don't fellowship with them. They deceive people. For your obedience has become known to all. That's a beautiful thing when your obedience is known to all. Therefore, I am glad on your behalf. But I want you to be wise in what is good and simple concerning evil. And the God of peace will crush. I like that. Crush. Satan under your feet shortly. <laughs> yeah, so just hold tight, Christian. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Okay. So, if your brother sins against you, what does it say do? What did Jesus, our Lord and Savior, whom we all claim to love, what did he say about that? Well, let's go to Ezekiel. Excuse me. <laughs> My bad. Uh, Matthews 18. 15 through 17. It says, Moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. He's not talking about if you have a big plank in your eye. Get that plank out of your eye. <laughs> okay? He's talking about if you don't have a plank in your eye, go and tell him, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he hears you, you have gained your brother. But if he will not hear, take with you one or two more that by the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established okay and if he refuses to hear them tell it to the church expose them okay why do you think I'd be exposing these people like people like people send me inboxes have you ever uh just made a choice to just you know secretly called Joel Osteen and I can't reach Joel Osteen man you think I'm a come on man I got a one bedroom apartment in DC Southeast Anacostia I'm in the hood, man. Joel Osteen, man, he's a mega millionaire, man. You tripping, man. You know how much tithes and offering he gets every Sunday? <laughs> you think he gonna talk to me, man? I ain't got no tithes and offerings for him. <laughs> Come on, man. You tripping, man. That man pitches baseballs for, for baseball teams and, and smiles and say, good job. Okay, okay. Waves at the crowd. Okay, y'all. And then leaves. Come on, man. You tripping, man. That man's on Larry King Live, man. <laughs> I'm not even... <laughs> There was a church that I was connected to. They interviewed me, man. They didn't even let my interview go out, man. They, my interview, they, they're like, oh, man. <laughs> this guy, man, we can't deal with this guy. They didn't even deal with my interview. You understand? And they, these people have well over, probably, they have at least over 500 people to their ministry. You know what I'm saying? They, they don't want my interview to go out. They're like, oh, man. They put, it, they put my mug shots up. And they, you know what I'm saying? Nah, man. Well, Jonathan used to be incarcerated in jail, in jail and stuff. Nah, man. You know what I'm saying? Mm -mm, they don't work like that. Okay? And if he refuses to hear them, tell it to the church. But if he refuses even to hear the church, let him be to you like a heathen and a tax collector. <coughs> All right. So, 2 Thessalonians. Three. Okay, I did that one already. Okay, cool. So, um, am I done yet? Galatians. 6, 1 through 2. Did I do that already? Let me go there. Galatians 6, 1 through 2. I believe I did.
It says, Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespasses, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. So this is judgment. Judgment is not always a bad thing. Like, like it's not always a bad thing. Ease up, y'all, man. Y'all scared of the word. It's not a bad thing, man. He's telling you, listen, go to your brother, rebuke your brother, correct him, let him know that he's wrong, and restore him in gentleness. You can do this thing, man. You can do this thing, okay? Also, if any of you got the book of the, the Acts of Paul and Thecla, I want you all to know that um, Demos and uh, Ur, Ermogenes, they were uh, heretics, and they and, and, and Demas is also spoken of in, in 2 Timothy 4:10. So I want you to know that because um, you know people might say, well, you know, you know, there was no judgment. No, there were people who 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 were bad, okay, in the body of Christ, okay. So so 2 Timothy 4:10. It says right here, 4:10. It says, um, for to this end we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God. And is that it? Am I right? First Timothy four ten. Oh, sorry. Second Timothy. Sorry about that. I'm like, hold on. That ain't it. Y'all know I, I do this too much. Okay, here we go. Four ten. Second Timothy four ten. He says, "Be diligent." Okay, I'm at nine. Be diligent to come to me quickly, for Demas has forsaken me. Demas, okay, D E M A S, has forsaken me, having loved this present world, and has departed for for Thess Thessalonica. Crescens for Galatia, Titus for the the uh, Demacia. Okay, so the, uh, Demas was wrong, man. Okay, Demas wanted this world. He 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 loved the world. Okay, um, we also have um, the others I gave you, Hemorrhagines. You know what I'm saying? Okay, I gave you another one. Um, Demas and and Ermogenes. Okay, they're spoken of in the Acts of uh, Paul and Thecla. Okay. So we know now that, you know, saying we know how to judge. <coughs> okay? Get your, worry about your own sins first. After you get your own sins out the way, then go rebuke your brother. Go restore your brother. And don't be mean about it. Be gentle and gentleness. Now, that doesn't mean you can't be prompt. That, ain't, that doesn't mean you can't have a serious tone. But make sure that, you know, you're not being like, man, what's the matter with you, man? You, man. You know what I'm saying? Don't be nasty. You know what I'm saying? Rebuke them. You know what I'm saying? And check them. You know what I'm saying? Um, okay? So. God bless you, man. Jesus loves you, you know what I'm saying? And uh this is for the body of Christ. Alright? We're gonna do this thing, man. We're gonna um we're gonna do this thing for Jesus. Yeshua's Lord.